الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد. My name is Aisha Wangareka Minju. Uh, I was born in Kenya. Um, I embraced Islam 10 years ago after really uh, a struggle in life, after searching for so long. Prior to becoming a Muslim, I was a flight attendant. Since I had it all, I was sitting on top of the world, like they say. I was a flight attendant, successful, earning any money that I could want, have wanted. I could have bought anything in any shop in Milan, Paris, Rodeo Drive. I, I bought anything I wanted, yet the more I bought, the more I was depressed. But Alhamdulillah, by the mercy of Allah, I, Islam found me. I didn't find Islam. His life is studied by children, all ages, and has been studied for the last 15 centuries. And he has been the most important man for 15 centuries continuous. He has been th the most read about man, the most talked about man, and continues to be. I mean, and every aspect of his life recorded. We don't have to struggle to find out how he lived, how he ate, how he sat, how he talked. I mean, no other person's life has been recorded, no other prophet, no other human being or any other thing has been given such attention that that and subhanallah it would be difficult to choose what part of prophet muhammad to talk about did i know muslims i knew muslims since i was born my next door neighbors were muslims I worked with Muslims, my, my colleagues were Muslims, my best friends were Muslims. But the saddest thing is they never invited us to Islam. They treated us like those kufars, those kufars. We never saw the Quran. We were not supposed to touch the Quran, you know, those nudges. Yet, we knew there was, I knew there was something about Islam that I wanted to be part of. But for me, it was not a religion. It was something, the Arabs, for the Arabs, and the Somalis because those were the people around me but I didn't know that there was that it was something Islam was something I could be part of I didn't know that and I was not invited I was made to feel I didn't fit in you can imagine I went to Mecca I went to Hajj nine, for nine years as a flight attendant taking pilgrims hearing all this labaik, Allahumma labaik, not knowing what it was but Alhamdulillah, maybe Allah had not meant for me to be, to be a Muslim then because probably I wouldn't have found the taste I have that now, what I know now that Islam is. But it's very sad, it's very sad that Muslims can have this treasure of Islam and not pass it on. Before being a Muslim, he was just a man, an Arab man, a crazy man who went around with a sword in the hand and probably threatening everybody to chop off their, hand, their, ha their heads if they... I didn't even know what because he was not introduced to me. He was not introduced. So I can't really say I knew Muhammad. The only thing I knew about Muhammad, we had to know this thing about 622 and the Hijra to pass our exams. After Islam, <laughs> what else can I say? Sometimes I can't wait for death to come because this is what separates me, inshallah, from seeing him in reality. What do I? What can I say about the man who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose to be the carrier of his last message, the mercy of humankind? What can I say about Prophet Muhammad I don't possess those words. <laughs> It's not too late. It's not too late just to open their eyes, to look at the world, to look at Islam is the hot topic. Take the advantage. Take the advantage and give the message. Deliver the message. We have to deliver the message. Bil fail by actions. Because we don't have a lot of time. We don't and how can anyone hope? To have the intercession, the, sh the intercession of Prophet Muhammad when he ignored him in dunya. We really can hope that on the, 
on Yom al Qiyamah we will be able to walk with him in the Sirat when we did nothing for him in dunya? It's very simple mathematics. If you love somebody, you follow him and you work for him. If he, what do you do for your lover? What do you do for your lover? If I didn't die or faint, faint and die, I'll tell him not to be sad. Not to be sad that the Muslims are in such deep sleep, in such deep slumber, did not understand him, and to make dua for us, the Muslims, to wake up and understand the message and work for it and, and emulate him and give the message to the world and just let everybody know who this man is. I would ask him to make lots of dua for us and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wake us up from our ghafla with mercy, not with a big bang, before, before there's no other time, before the end comes. I would ask him to make lots of du'as for us. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad abduhu wa rasuluhu.